your name on this morning God God there is none like you there is none beside you there is none greater than you oh God and so God we just lay at your feet on this morning God God we invite your spirit to come in and clean us up oh God if there's anything that we have done by thought word or deed that would hinder us from entering into your presence please forgive us now oh God God because we want to come pressing in this morning God God we want to come laying every burden at your feet this morning God God we want you to renew our minds on this morning for a fresh word oh God Lord God because we want to receive God God when we leave we want to be changed God God we want to be transformed God we want to be new but we leave this house God we don't want to leave out the way that we came in this morning God so God we yield we yield we yield to you oh God we yield to the leaving of your Holy Spirit on this morning God God touch your servant God that you sent all the way to Florida God God we know that you have a 
a word in our Jesus. tongue, oh God. God, don't allow there to be any hindrances in your word coming forth on this morning, oh God. Have your way, God. God, touch your minstrels through music, oh God. Lord God, allow them to sing songs of Zion, God. To sing songs to let your glory rain down, oh God. Have your way, God. Move by your spirit, God. God, touch in this building.
want to say goodbye. It's a new day. Right? He's yeah. doing a new thing. Amen. Come on, fill me up. Sister Dave.
Say that one more time. You provide the fire. Come on, you provide. Remember that. You provide. You provide the fire.
Amen. Because it is a sacrifice. But guess what? The Bible says that that is your reasonable sacrifice, your reasonable service unto him, that you would present your body unto him, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Amen. So when we provide the sacrifice, he will provide the fire. Amen. When we open up, amen, he'll come inside and do just what he wants to do to us. And then our response to that should be hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that is the highest in the universal praise. Amen. Amen, praise the Lord at this time. God bless you, praise team, under the direction of the wonderful and handsome minister, Sherwood Davis. Amen, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Amen, praise the Lord. And at this time, we will have our poem, our sister Fatia Ezekiel. And the name of the poem is Still I Rise. And the reason, the reason that this poem has been chosen is to emphasize that no matter the social injustices and inequalities against women, we still rise to meet those challenges. This poem is to emphasize that no matter the new challenges facing us in worship and serving God in ministry, we still rise to meet the challenges. Amen. We believe that God is doing a new thing and creating new opportunities for us in the way we serve in God's kingdom. We will perceive it, and we as women will rise to the occasion. Amen. God bless you. Receive Sister Fatia Ezekiel at this time. Amen. You may write me down in history, which are bitter to sell lies. 
You may prod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I arrive. Mm -hmm. Does my sassiness upset you? <clears throat> Why are you to sell with gloom? Because I walk like I got old world pumping in my living room. Just like moon and sun with its self ties, just like cold spring and high, still, I rise. Do you want to see me broken? Proud head and lowered eyes, shoulder falling like teardrop, weakened by my soul for cry. Does my hastiness upset you? Don't take it awfully hard, because I lack like I got diamonds digging in my backyard. Does my sad sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise? That I dance like I got diamonds at the middle of my ties. Hi, Abdul. <laughs> Out of the hut of history, shame, I arise. Up from the past, written in pain, I arise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, whirling and swirling, I bear in the tide. Living the night of horror and shame, I arise. Into the daybreak that is wonder wondrously clear, I arise. Bring you the gift that my ancestor gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Yeah. 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 A wonderful, wonderful lesson for us. Amen, amen. She said, still I rise. Oh, no matter the circumstances, I'm rising above it. God bless you, God bless you. Amen. And now we continue in a song. I'll rise up by Sister Charity Powell. Come on, come on, let's celebrate, let's celebrate. And Sister Kimberly Coney, hallelujah, followed by the introduction of the speaker, Dr. Reverend Camila Bernstein Bradley, will be done by our very own illustrious Minister Carla E. Powell, in Jesus' name. God bless you.
You ought to give God some praise in this morning. historic Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, serving under the pastoral leadership of Reverend Dr. Ralph Warnack, our current 
Senator of Georgia. Amen. Amen. She serves as the ministerial liaison for the deaf ministry and assists with the young adults. And she also leads the young adult ministry via Facebook Live at the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, my home church in California. I said she serves on the death ministry. Not death, death. Reverend Bradley's roots in congregational ministry began as a young girl under the pastoral leadership of her father, Reverend Dr. Alvin C. Bernstein. She is the fifth generation of preachers. The fifth generation. And her mother also is an ordained reverend. It was in her early childhood church in Brooklyn, New York. All the New Yorkers in the house just wave at her. Hey, you can stand up if you want to. She was raised in Brooklyn, New York. Amen. And that is where her spiritual gifts were revealed through ministerial liturgical dance and as a prayer warrior. I must just pause right there for a minute. Several years ago, I went back to my home church, Bethlehem, where her father is the pastor. And he asked us one night to get together for a New Year's Eve celebration, put something together. So we had went on a youth convention with her and Charity and Celeste and some other youth from the church and we got together and then one day we put a praise team together with youth from different ones and it was very anointed. So I know she is an anointed liturgical dancer. Amen. And a prayer warrior. Amen. Amen. The impact these ministries had on her life has been transformative, particularly as she was diagnosed in her early 20s with Usher syndrome, which is a condition characterized by partial or total hearing loss and vision loss that worsens over time. Reverend Bradley's family nurtured her to be an advocate for her health care needs. Her diagnosis did not limit her capabilities. It created greater expressions of praise and worship for how she serves others. She is not only worships through liturgical dance, but she uses American Sign Language to enhance the worship experience for others. Reverend Bradley learned very early that effective communication is key in understanding another person's story. Reverend Bradley believes she is a God success story, a woman who is ever evolving into her experiences and encounters with God and the world. Reverend Bradley received a bachelor's in psychology from Mills College in Oakland, California. She is a dual degree graduate of Mercer University with a Master of Divinity and Master of Clinical Mental Health Counseling, amen? Reverend Bradley completed clinical pastoral education at Emory St. Joseph's Hospital and the Veterans Medical Center. Reverend Bradley is currently employed as a counselor at the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency, which allows her the opportunity to hear clients' life stories and participate in their life transformations. Recently, I would say just within the week, they moved back, she moved back to her hometown of New York. So we will lift her up as she is transitioning back to move around her hometown. Reverend Bradley is married to Cameron. Amen, this gentleman, hey, amen. And she has a son, Malachi, who's already adjusting in children's church, amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, let's stand and receive this amazing woman of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless you. Good morning. 
praise God. Everyone lift up your hands and give God the praise for all of what he is doing in our lives and all of what God is going to do. God, continue to move. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for this experience and being here. Praise God for allowing me this opportunity to share with you in Tampa, Florida. I'm greatly enjoying this warm weather. <laughs> I want to thank God for Sister Bernadine Randall. Our relationship go way back, way back in the Women's Conference at Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. And she embraced me not only into the ministry, but into her life and as well as her family's life and being able to connect with her daughter, Minister Carla Powell. Thank God for you and your hospitality that you have given to us. The minute that my husband and son arrived in Tampa, thank you for your hospitality. Let's praise God for the bishop of this house. God is ready to thank God for him. I had a great, wonderful, small conversation with him. Thank you. And I learned he's from Brooklyn. So he is a wonderful man. <laughs> I want to give God praise from Ebenezer Baptist Church, bringing you greetings from our, my pastor, the Raphael G. Warnock, who serves as our U.S. Senate in Georgia. But let us truly, truly thank God for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus for allowing us one more time and celebrating this special Sunday, Women's Day. Hallelujah. Let me do what I was assigned to do, and that is to bring the word. I will be reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, starting at verse 15. Isaiah chapter 43, starting at verse 15. I will be reading from the New International Version. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcement together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out mm. like a wick. Forget the former things. Jesus. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness Jesus. and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Amen. That is the word of the Lord. Amen. God, we praise you for this day. We praise you for all who are yearning to hear your voice. May our heart and spirit receive you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. May the people of God say, Amen. Amen. I want you guys to bear with me on this morning as this is the first time that I've been in fellowship in the worship service in person over a year. Wow. So if I get excited and I go another place, you guys join me there, will you? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I want to preach for the next few minutes on my title, New and Improved. Mm. New and Improved. I'm sure you have heard the saying, new and improved, 
We may have heard it while watching television. There are commercial breaks advertising many things, such as food to try, places to go, things to do, and a lot of emphasis on things to buy. The marketer is responsible for convincing viewers who are watching that they are missing something, and they need to experience this item in their lives. They advertise in such a way we ought to feel like we are missing what is being advertised. Recently, I viewed a commercial on Magic Mesh. It is similar to a screen door. Nevertheless, this particular one allows a person to have their doors open while preventing bugs from coming inside of the home. I must admit that it's pretty convincing to me on, alone on what it does. This advertisement continue on to say, this new and improved magic mesh now has 18 magnets to be exact and open and closes automatically behind the person going through it. The item itself blew me away, but now I'm even more intrigued as I look forward to summer backyard gatherings. I'm looking to have my doors open and be able to have something to prevent the bugs from coming in. The actor in this commercial emphasized the details with various visuals of how it worked, as if to say, if you do not have this product, you should definitely go get this new and improved product. Mm -hmm. It was said as it is like new, meaning it is not exactly a brand new product, but it has new features. Wow. Magic Mesh was improved from its previous condition, and now you must get this item. The value of Magic Mesh has increased because it is now new and improved. I know sometimes we often speak of having a new and improved life. We often say, I'm living my best life. I'm doing me. When the new year comes or when your birthday arrives, you say, this year is going to be better than the last year. All right, preacher. We often look for ways to increase the values in our lives. However, we fall short many times because we do not know exactly how to live a life that is new and improved when we enjoy the same old things we have been doing. My God. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 Let me go to the scriptures to help me out. Here we are in Isaiah 43, during the time of the Babylonian exile. Yes. The Israelites are experiencing a period of captivity. They are held captive in Babylon and prevented from returning to their homeland. The Jews were held over 50 years. I mean, that is a very long time. What is important to note in this scripture was not just the fact that they were held captive, but how they were to return to their homeland. How they were to return to their homeland. The scripture was structured in such a way that it, it recalls God's previous doing of deliverance. And it also highlights God's continuous promise of deliverance. Amen. The way the Israelites travel before through the wilderness and wasteland will not be the challenge when they return to their home. Right. You see, God has removed those obstacles out of their way. God is showing up differently in how they return on this journey. God is showing up differently during this time as he delivered the Israelites. This journey back home will be new and improved. The prophet in Isaiah is speaking of how merciful God is, how loving God is, how gracious God is to his people. The prophet go on to say that God has not left the Israelites alone and will continue to deliver them. God delivered a new and improved life for the exiled Jews and how they will return. The exiled Israelites will not go back the same way they left it. Amen. We often become stuck in our own past experiences, the wasteland and the wilderness, that we miss the movement of God. 
What is the wasteland and wilderness you speak of, Reverend Wiley? Well, I'm glad you are paying attention this morning. The wasteland is an area that has been devastated by the flood, storm, or war, whereas the wilderness is a wild and uncultivated area. That is something we are experiencing right now. We have experiences that felt like we have been devastated and traumatized in ways that we could not fathom getting through. All right. This past year with COVID, COVID-19 and mind. social injustice felt like a wasteland and wilderness experience. Preach. There are those whose lives are never the same Preach. because loved ones' lives have been taken too soon. Jobs were lost. Depression and anxiety creeping up from behind, from being isolated. Come on, the old things we used to enjoy may no longer be available for us to do. Even in the midst of what looks like old and dead, God can make a way. Amen. Just like the exiled Israelite made it through the wasteland and wilderness before, their deliverance can happen again. God is still moving things in our lives to work together for our good. God is still in the making of new and improved lives business. God is still working in and around us. That is a shout moment right there because when we are stuck in our wasteland and wilderness experience, God shows up and cultivate our path. When hope seems lost, God shows up. When the path ahead looks weary and long, God shows up. And when God show up, we will find that our journey is where he has taken us in new and approved. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. God continues to show up in our lives when we don't know how we're going to get over. We know we have to go through to get to where God has taken us, but we need God to deliver us. Let me see if I can make it plain this morning. Today we have been fixated on what life looks like right now in front of our physical eyes and convinced ourselves that life was better before. Mm. We did not have to wear masks before. We did not have to social distance before. We did not have limited connection for church worship services before. We did not have to shelter in place before. We did not have to pick and choose the importance of when to leave our homes before. Wow. We did not have to decide whether our children would do remote or in-person learning before. Right. So many things before that we did not have to consider. The old lifestyle that pre-COVID life is gone. gone. We tend to wish our old life back. But right. let this say this morning, let tell that life rest in peace. Tell your neighbor that life is gone. That life is gone. It, it gone. is Women's Day, right? It sure is. Let, let me speak to my sisters real quick. Perhaps my sister and said, my life is exhausting. I miss my life when I had no kids. I miss my life when I was focused on my own dreams and aspirations in life, and I was able to rip and run the street as I please. I missed my life when I was not married. I did not have to deal with my partner's flaws. I missed my life when I was married and having someone to talk to. I missed my life when I had no responsibility or accountability. I missed my life when it was much easier to live. I missed my life when I was independent, adventurous, and spontaneous. I miss the old me. Say rest in peace to that life. Someone needs to hear this this morning as she tries to hold on to the pieces of her old life. Ooh, God has God. made us a new being, wives, mothers, and working women. Embrace all of the roles you have because some wish they had a partner or a child. Some wish they had someone to answer. Preach. God Preach, is Reverend. using the many hats you wear to make you a better you for all of us in this pandemic. Since we are all in it, right? Do not focus on what your life used to be before COVID-19. Do not focus on what your life used to be just yesterday. We should not rush to live a life we used to live, but focus on what is ahead. Amen. Focus on the ways in which our lives can be new and improved. I want to propose this morning in the midst 
of what feels like the wasteland and wilderness experience, God is still delivering. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. God will deliver a new and improved life. Amen. Amen. Glory. Some of you may be asking yourself, what can we do to see the movement of God during our wasteland, wasteland and wilderness experience? I'm glad you're paying attention this morning. This text helps us to see three things as we witness the movement of God. Three things that help us to witness the movement of God. First, we see the movement of God when we recall who God is. Amen. 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 We must recall who God is. Some of us are in the wasteland and wilderness experience, and we forgot who brought us to this point. Some of us are in those experiences, and we forgot that we woke up this morning. Some of us are in the experience, and we forgot how we got here this morning. So let us recall who God is. Verse 15 starts off saying, I am the Lord, your Holy One. Israel's creator, your king. He made a way through the sea and a path through mighty water. He drew out the chariot and horses, the army and reinforcement. The God who has brought Israel like out before in spite of their faithfulness My is the life. same God who will bring you out to the other side. God continues to show up in the ways in which we need him. We see the movement Movement of God when we take the time to recall all of the things God has been for us. Amen. God has been a mother when our mothers fall short. Yeah. Our father when our fathers abandon us. Our friends when our friends turn their back on us. Our teacher when we learn when our learning is limited. Our way maker when the doors seem closed. I know I'm talking to someone this morning. Our healer when the doctor said there's nothing else left to do. Our peace when chaos is all around us. Our strength when we are weary. On, our provider when our needs are scarce. And our deliverer when our hope seems lost. Maybe it's just me that keeps on experiencing God showing up in our lives and being exactly what I needed at my time of need. Sometimes we don't know what we need God to be, but God continues to show up in our lives. Can I get a witness? God continues to show up, and we didn't know that we needed him to be what we needed. We might have thought we had everything that we need, but when God showed up, God revealed himself to you. Hallelujah. Give God the praise for being an on-time God. When we recall who God is, we can also see the movement of God reflecting on what God has done before. Reflecting on what God has done before. Let us admit, sometimes we put God in a box. We set up an expectation that God will move how God moved before. The text said, forget the former thing. Do not dwell on the past. Right. See, I am doing a new thing. Yeah. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Somebody missed that. Do you not perceive it? It springs up right before you. I'm, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is planting hope for us in what seems dead. God will move in accordance to his will. Do not limit God based upon how he showed up before in your life or in the lives of others. When we truly reflect on the work of God, we can experience the newness of God. God shows up in new ways every day. Amen. God is an ever-present help. God is not going to act in the old way as he has done before. God will not show up for your time of need in the same way he showed up for your sister or your brother's God need. Mind. Open up your eyes and heart to see how God is moving in the lives of those around you or even in your own life. God is providing a newness. Be still and reflect 
We do not want to be stuck and miss how God is moving. And lastly, when we can see the movement of God, when we rejoice right in the middle of what feels like wasteland and wilderness. First, we recall who God is. Second, we reflect on what God has done for us. Right. And lastly, we rejoice right in the middle of it. I am sure you can find reasons to rejoice. Rejoicing in the middle of it, of challenging time, help us to see clearly how God is moving. We could be stuck in the midst of the wasteland and wilderness experience right there in the text. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in All the right. wilderness and streams in the wasteland. All right. I drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, so they may proclaim my praise. God chose us just as he chose the Israelites and taking them to their greater de destiny. He delivered them numerous times and is still delivering. When you are clear on who God is, you ought to praise him. I dare you to praise him right in the middle of your wasteland experience. Praise him in the wilderness of chaos in your life and you cannot seem to see your way out. Praise him right there when your vision is blurry and fogged up. Praise him right in the middle of it. It may seem dead and uncultivated all around you, but God. The world may seem like a dark place, but God. Your job may be challenging of an environment to work in, but God. Your finances may not be where you want it to be, but God. Your health may be stricken with challenges, but God. Your children may be driving you insane, but God. God is doing a new thing. God is preparing you to be new and improved, just like that magic mess you existed before, but you will have a new feature and better tools to go forth in the world. You have been improved to experience God like never before, and God will show up in your life like never before, because God is still delivering. God has never left you. God has never forsaken you. God is still moving in your life. He that has begun a great work in you, God is faithful to perform it. Even when we are unfaithful, God gives us new mercy every morning. God speaks every day. How God showed up before, he will continue to show up in new ways. We might have, have to have a new and improved praise for the things that God is doing in our lives. We might have to have a new and improved praise if we want a life that is new and improved. We ought to have a new and improved praise when the enemy keeps on lurking. And we say, oh no, I serve a God that is bigger than me and my problem. The enemy will not have control of my life again. I'm not going back to the way things were before. Thank God for Jesus. I said thank God for Jesus. I said thank God for Jesus who came on this earth so that we can have an opportunity to live a new and improved life. God showed his love in a new and improved way by allowing his only begotten son to die so that we can have life. Life more abundantly. Thank God for Jesus, who showed us what it means to hear and follow the voice of God. I dare you to stand up on your feet on this morning. If you want to have a new and improved life, you ought to give God a new and improved praise. You ought to give God a new and improved hallelujah. All your hallelujah should belong to him, because he is deserving of a new and improved us. Let us not go back to the life that we experienced, God. Hallelujah! I want to challenge you, new life, as I fellowship with you on yesterday at this beautiful prayer breakfast service. Lady, calling on God, submitting our request, praying for the church, family, nation, community, and every request on our heart. We must hold our end of the relationship by allowing God to speak. You guys missed that. We must hold our end of our relationship 
by allowing God to speak. We often talk so many to God. We tell him what we want. We tell him what we need. We tell him how to move. We tell him what we need him to do in our lives. But we have to step back and allow God to speak. And we have to be humble enough to listen to the voice of God. We spoke now. We spoke yesterday, and now we must take the time to let to preach. God, allowing God to move in our lives according to his will. We know that all things work together for our good. We must hear the voice of God to see the great work within us. I challenge you, my brother, I challenge you, my sister, to watch God change things. I join in this song, writer that says, sometimes there are obstacles in the road that can have you feeling low, and you do not know how to move forward. And sometimes there are time, turns you want to take, but the way gets hard to trace. Now you are wondering, how did you get here? But do not give up until you see how God is ordering your steps, so you can walk into your sea. He that has begun a great work in you. He that has begun a great work in you. Hallelujah. Now you know that God has begun a great work in you. He that has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform it. God has a purpose for your life. God has a plan for your life. God wants you to live life exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can think and or imagine he that had begun a great work in you is doing a new thing in your life. Hallelujah. God has on, never Reverend. left you. God is still present. God Preach, is Reverend. still delivering. I know I have a testimony on this Preach, morning Reverend. that the life that I lived before is brand new. The life that I lived before, I don't want to go back to that. Preach, I don't want to go back to the life that I enjoy so lovely because God is doing something new ahead. God has Bless me to preach the word to you this morning because the Camila back then did not want to preach. The Camila back then did not want to serve in the church. But God said, I'm doing a new thing in your life. God said, I'm going to bring you through to this point in your life. God said, I'm going to use you in ways that you never imagined. I want you guys to jump on your feet this morning. If you want to live a new and improved life,
He didn't want them to focus on how they came out the first time because God is always in the business of doing new things. Yes. For the former things have passed away. He said, Behold, had you not been here, you would not have believed it. We on our way to our new building. I don't even know where it's at yet. I don't know where it's at. I don't even have the money in my pocket yet, but I'm declaring it right now in front of you that we're on our way. Oh, God. Hallelujah. What a successful, successful women's recognition day. Amen. Let's give the speaker another hand. Let's stand up and honor her. What a wonderful job. I was so, you know, I was, I was glad to call her read her resume. Not the resume of what she had. I wanted it all to be read. All her accomplishments that you could put in, the things that she's been able to overcome and accomplish. Fifth generation preacher. Come on, one more praise for that. Please don't respect the person. There's not a male nor female. Amen. She did a wonderful job. Amen. And at this time, I think, Mother, you have some words, don't you? Let me look at the program. I know I'm going to do the benediction. Oh, Minister Tijuana is coming, right? Yes. Or, or, okay. Oh, God. We got to take up some money, right? Somebody Amen. has money. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just before we move into the opportunity for each of you to sow, amen. It would be remiss of us if we came into a setting like this with the spirit so powerful and moving so mightily and not allow an opportunity for someone that may wish to give their life to the Lord or rededicate their life to the Lord. Or if there's just a very, very pressing prayer need that you have, we would receive our bishop at this time, amen, for those various opportunities, again, whether that be a... Re recommitment of your life to the Lord or is a surrendering? Here? Yes, thank you. Once we dedicate their life to the Lord, I want to give their life to the Lord. You're here. You're, you're doing my Facebook or YouTube line. Uh, text us. Let us know that's you. Amen. So I say, I'm glad I'm saved. Yeah. 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 Father, we give you thanks today for, for grace and salvation. We thank you for Jesus. We believe, God, that he died for our sins. We believe that he rose again. Because he rose, God, we rise with him. We give you thanks for making us brand new. We ask that you bless this wonderful family that we just met, I just met for the first time, that you give her back what she's poured out and then some. I know the challenges that New Yorkers face know the challenges. I pray, God, you make room for them. Make room. Make make, make room in, in the real estate market for them. Give them the, uh, not just a place to stay, but something that gives them a sense of home and family. Don't let them give up and not receive where they're going. I bless them. I thank you for their lives. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. We're going to take an offering. Who does that? T on your feet? Come on. Minister T. You know, we can always hear a great speaker, but when we begin is to give our gittering back to the Lord, it is time to give because it's offering time! That's right! It is offering time. Amen! I know that we're all familiar with Malachi 310. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If, if, and I would not open up the windows for, of heaven and pour out for you a blessing that there would not be room enough to receive. And listen, I will rebuke the, the devourer for your sake so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground 
and the vines in your field, and it will not bear fruit. Say the Lord of hosts. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every hand that is about to give right now. We know that some came in right now with a certain amount to give, but we believe because of the word, dear God, we know that we cannot beat you giving. So we will give to you what thus saith the Lord. And if you've already touched our hearts to give more, we will give it back to you right now. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, come on, let us begin to give. Usher, you may serve the people. Friday night via Zoom 
Amen. When you want to do something for God, you don't even allow COVID amen. to get you don't allow it to hinder you. We need to be a Zoom, amen. amen. And then come on, mother, come on. In the name of Jesus, we love you. God bless Look at all foxy and everything. <laughs> That's my big head, baby. So I might go all different kinds of ways. So my is going to and fro. I have to so much you to you thank God for it. Yes. It's been such a blessing, a good day. Help you out. This weekend has been such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't even know what other than saying all praise glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to give him all of he deserves all of the praise. Hallelujah. And so we just thank you and thank him for that. I thank God for a uh, uh, pastor bishop register for allowing us to uh, have this fellowship this weekend, this conference, whatever this this uh, spiritual encounter that we have experienced. To uh, all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially to our visitors, yes. we just thank you for coming and joining, joining with us. I first, I just, as I said, I want to praise God for who he is and all has he has done through us this weekend. The most of you all, I most of all, I thank all of you wonderful women of new life for your trust and your support and i thank you for allowing me to be your leader because without you i could do nothing and i couldn't do nothing without your loving support and i when i say loving support i really mean your loving support and i thank god for your faithful women your consistent service at your consistency in showing me that you appreciate and you support me, and that is most important for me. I, um, as I said, I couldn't do it without you, each and every one of you. I have said, as I said on yesterday, at our great, wonderful, powerful paragraphs, the Lord showed up and showed out in the women of new life. And I thank God, and I know something was said or heard or done on yesterday that should help you toward your getting closer to God so that you can receive that new thing that he's trying to do in your personal lives and in your life of the ministry where you serve in your church. Drawing closer that you can do a greater work for him and a greater service. Forgetting those new, th old things, yes. and looking forward yes. to the new things. Yes. Uh, God is just—he's so awesome, and He wants to take us, ladies, to a higher level. Yes. And if this is a sign of what we had this weekend, we're on our way to a new level. Yes. So I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I have so many people to thank because, like I said, this is just—I just. I just hear from God and did point, 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 point. And every one that I asked to do, whatever was done on yesterday and on today, they did it without a shadow of complaint or anything. And I just really thank you. Let's give it up for our mighty, powerful praise of uh, MC program mover. yesterday on Saturday at the lovely Hilton Hotel. We had a good time. We had a good fellowship. We had good food and physical food. And then we had good spiritual food. I thank God for uh, uh, Sister Beverly Bobo who led us on the importance of prayer. <laughs> Professor T.T. who led us on how to pray effectively. I thank you for our intercessors that prayed for us I uh, thank you for Sister Joanne Skinner, Sister Michelle, and our own first lady, Sister Philip, for their prayers yesterday. And we want to thank our, our, our altar call uh, leader, Sister Renee Casanova, Amen. and her team, the beautiful ones that prayed for me. I still feel that prayer. And I thank you, God, for that. So I thank you for all of those who had help on yesterday. And I thank you 
for today. I thank you for everyone who helped in the service on today. I first of all, I just want to say our praise and worship team, God bless you. Yes. Our yes. minister of music, Brother Sherwood. Get him back in here, because I, I want to some, say something to him. Get him back in here. When he gets, Tell him I said, get back in here. Get in here. Get in here. No. Some bishop said he better get in here. I got a song I want to sing. All right. I want to thank God for uh, our, where is, let's see, faith, 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 Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful poem. Yes. I asked her if she do it, and she said yes. And she did, and she prepared, and she yeah. presented it. She's in a diaper. Very well. Okay. Oh. Oh. Too much again, information. <laughs> to the, to the, that do, lovely duet. My sister Kim, my sister Charity. They said that I rise. And it's, it's really inspiring. We can rise above anything that we have, right? Rise above that diaper. About our speaker, our guest speaker today. God bless you, my God. When God put on my heart, he said, Who can I get to say? She's close right here in Atlanta. It won't take up about six hours to drive down here. Little did we know God was doing a new thing and sending her on to New York, but she still came anyway. And I'm so thankful you blessed us with your message. New and improved. And we all want to be new and improved. Amen. So very, very much. So we just thank God for everything. So I want to just do a little special uh, thank you. I want to thank our men that helped us yesterday. Amen. Brother Chris, come out here. Oh, Mama, okay. <laughs> she said, come on out here. Come on out here, boy. Come on out here. Come on out here. Come on out here. Don't make me get my switch. A big switch for him. I just want to, this is just a little love token. Your husband doing diapers? No, no, no. No, I didn't. Uh-oh. Yes, sir. Oh, Jesus. You know how we drop in everything. They're going to let you drop that money. They're all laughing. See that? I'm going to get it together. Just keep living is all I say. Uh, Chris, I just want to thank you for your support this weekend. For you. Wow. Well, they don't know that it, it takes a lot to put this on. It's a lot. Of, you see the fluff of it, but it's a lot of work that goes behind it, a lot of support to get things. And Chris, I asked him to come and help with our uh, audio sound system. And not only did he do that, he picked that stuff up or, or saw that it was picked up and got it to the hotel and just stayed with us. And, we had good laughs and good fun. So, Deacon Chris Johnson, thank you very much. This is just a small token. See that? Pay yourself, God, don't it? And what can I say about our minister of music? Get him, man. Right? See that? See that, sir? Pay yourself, God, don't it? Faithfulness, faithfulness. I said, and coming all the way down from. Pain City. Hope County, Hope County, wherever. Hope County. I know it's more than quicker, longer than it takes me to get to my house. But we thank God for your service. You just add so much to our service on yesterday. You blessed us with your, your, your music ministry on today. So we just thank God. And it's just a little something just to say thank you for your service. I appreciate it very much. Um, we dare not forget our first lady. We always want to honor and worship and respect her and give her praise. So this is just a little something. I love you. She's so sweet. I came in this morning. I had a pink, I never asked for it. I have this pink mask to match my pink shoes and my pink jewelry. So I just thank you. We got a little something in here for a little nourishment for your body, but also a little something we know that you're a crafty person. So we got a little something for you to go to the craft place and get you a little supplies. Okay, man, God bless you.
and it's, it says, in memory of Sister Herminia Gonzalez, dedicated servant of New Life Christian Fellowship, a woman of the year award, right? No, no? this is just in memory of Sister Minnie. We just lost her a couple of weeks ago. And we thank God. We want to just remember and reflect on her life, her service to New Life. And I just wanted her family to have this token of always remembering what her mother was to the New Life family. Amen. Amen. So I'll do a few things. It goes in. Okay. And uh, Reverend, I'll, I won't say Reverend Brown's name, but you're Reverend Bradley now. So come on down, Reverend Bradley. <laughs> It's so, so hard to look at somebody you know talking like this and do that call regret, but it's a blessing too. Because all I know is keep dealing, come dealing. So we just thank God for what you poured into our lives and how he used you today. So we just want to bless you and say God be praised in a special, special way. Of course, I probably left the car. And this part. <laughs> Over there. I done dug in that person so many times. You probably tell them, leave me alone, but I get it. But then this is part of your love token that we want to give you, and I'll give you the rest of it. Amen. Every year we have been trying to honor and present to, uh, it's so many of you do so many things that's very hard, but we try to pick out one woman who has really impacted the church over the past year, each year. And so this morning we have, yes, hold up, don't you stay here, this is the flower. Hold this to Might as well just stand right here. <laughs> what else you want me to do? Yes, ma'am. What honey do? <laughs> honey do this and honey do that. <laughs> but we, we want to present this certificate of recognition to someone who we saw that made an impact, a great impact on the church. Last year, this woman in October led our pastor's anniversary. And as a result of it, she started a prayer for 30 days for our pastor and their wife, his wife. And as a result, we've been praying every morning at 6 a.m. since October. And I don't think of anything greater than prayer for her pastor. So we, God bless us that we take this time to present. Come on up here, sister. Make me cry. Oh, yesterday she called me. I said, I need somebody to be down there with Sister Dana, who I forgot. Look at the lovely decorations. Sister Dana I'm did. Look at me. I know you. At the, at the, uh, yeah. at the uh, prayer breakfast and here today in this lovely decoration here in this building. And I, I, I told her, she called me. I said, I need you down. I said, no, you come too far. You don't need to be down here at 7 30. She said, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So this certificate of recognition is presented to this day on May the 16th, 2021 to Chantel Davis in expression of our love, of your love, support, and commitment to serving as program chair for the pastor's appreciation, developing intercessory prayer call, and serving on the hospitality ministry. Thank you for your dedication during the countless hours you sacrificially devoted to serving the body of Christ at New Life Christian Fellowship. May God always bless you, yes. keep you, and thank you for all of your service. Effective May 16th, Bernadine Randall, <laughs> Women's Ministry Leader, and Bishop Bridges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you so much. I love you. People. Yeah. So just, yeah. just, 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 The same house. I gave him the wrong call. It doesn't say Davis. S. Davis. S. Davis. They all. No, no. Give him the Chantel. That's where they go. <laughs> they go. They both go down. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
He, he gonna give it to he gonna give it to the dog. Yeah, I got so many people telling me what to do. You know I can't see good. Oh, here, Camilla. This is what I was looking for. God bless you. Oh, I still got God bless you all. Thank you for bearing with me. Please, and just accept me as I am. I just have to do me. And uh, somebody else wanted to ask you. Sister Renee, you said you wanted to do a presentation? Okay. We love you, Mother B. Thank you, Lord Louise. I love you all, too. I really, really do. Because y'all have shown me so much love. God bless you, too, girl. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I just want to say in my short time being here at New Life, it has blessed me immensely, blessed my soul, um, the love, the fellowship, the awesome word. And I just thank God. We know that everything is providentially divine. We don't say it's a coincidence. We don't say it. We know that God orders our steps, and I thank God that he ordered my steps. And I thank God for Mother V. She's my Naomi. So just a little token of appreciation for myself and Minister Nichols and Michelle Nichols. And to our First Lady, we love you. <laughs> and Mother V, thank you for being our Naomi. Yes. We all need a Naomi. That's so true. You're now in the hands of our who, program mover. Or? And I was, uh, Michelle, we thank you for coming all the way down. Our new member. And she loves us so much and wants to be a part. She came all the way down from Fort Lauderdale. So I thank you so much for that. What is Father's Day for you stuff? Look, he's laughing. I want my day. When's my day coming, right? Don't go to y'all all these big days. When's my day coming? <laughs> I want a day. We have a lady that has been on that, and I didn't have a friend when I came here. And I just want to honor Mr. Stell Moses. She's been my friend, and she comes on a wow. She comes to every. Thing I invite her to, and I thank you so much for your support, and I just praise God for you. I your love. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. I am so honored and so humbled to be a servant at New Life. My greatest honor. We love you. My great honor. We love you, Bless the Lord for each of you. I bless the Lord for Mother believing in me Amen. and seeing something in me that I don't even know if I see it myself. But I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for you. This weekend has been wow. 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 Amazing. So I just I thank God. For this, I just want to take an opportunity. <laughs> God has been so good to me. He continues to blow my mind because I don't often get to worship. But my mother, mom, would you stand? I don't often get to worship with my mother, and for her to be here on a day that I'm honored. In the house of the Lord, it means so much to me. So, as a related Mother's Day gift, this is a gift to me to have my mother here with me. I just, Bishop, I just have this a minute. Yeah, go take your time. Because all of who I am today is because of my. Mother. Amen. My mother got pregnant with me at the age of 15. Oh God, oh God. She had me at the age of 16. Tell her story. I remember when my mother worked two jobs while going to night college and still never skipping a beat with me. 
My mother's been at State Farm for almost 35 years. She started out as a secretary and ended up in upper leadership. And it's all because she loved people along the way. She loved people. And all that she has accomplished in life, it was so that she could give back to our family and to others. So as I stand up here, I couldn't be honored without honoring my mother. And to my husband and my children, I thank God for you all just being there and supporting me every step of the way. To my husband who supported me, if it wasn't without him, I wouldn't have been able to do what I've done concerning the prayer ministry because it is a sacrifice and it takes me away from my family, but he never grumbled or complained because ministry is so important to us. That is what has kept us for all those 23 years of marriage. It is the ministry. So baby, I thank God. I thank God for you. And to my long-standing friend, Kimberly Coney, we've been friends since we were about 19 years old. We were wow. friends in ministry. We grew up in the church together. Amen. And life happened, and things happened, and we always stayed connected. We always stayed connected. It was always, no matter when we used to, I'm going to just say this, when we used to wear our daisy dukes <laughs> and do our thing, we would always find our way back to God. We would always, always, always. <laughs> so I, I thank God. That's my role, dog. That's my role, dog. And so I thank God. I thank God for her. And to my other friend, Kimberly, we've been friends for almost 16 years now. <laughs> God is amazing because the night before the conference, I got a text message that she was coming into town. <laughs> and so, again, I'm full and I'm honored and I apologize for taking up so much space, but I know that it's God just doing what he does. And I pray that you receive the word that you needed today, Kimberly. I know that God had you here to get what you Wow. None of this conference was an accident. And I pray that every woman got what you needed. Because as a woman, it's hard. You wear so many hats. You have so many responsibilities. You have to smile beyond the pain some days as a woman. Because you carry so much. God made you that way. He built you that way. So women continue to rise up. Continue to allow God to do that new thing in you and I cannot forget my mother-in-law Christina Louise Davis Amen. a woman who has loved me from the age of 15 when I began to date her son all right amen she never rejected me all right even when I wasn't always doing all the things that were right to do she always loved me and she encouraged me mama I love you and I thank God for you to my father-in-law. Hmm. He is who he is. <laughs> my buddy, he is that. who he is. My buddy. But you know what? Some buddy. things you just have to wait on God to fix them. Amen. We didn't always have the bond that we have today. But you wow. know what? Now today he stands proudly and says, that's my daughter. Wow. Amen. Wow. That's my daughter. Wow. And I say, that is my daughter. Yeah. And I'm proud of it. I love him. I love him. I love him. Amen. Amen. So at this time, again, I just want to thank you for this honor to just be able to serve in the house of the Lord. Amen. God bless you for that mighty word. We pray for safe travel and mercies for you and your family as you return home. At this time, will you have the benediction? Brought something up. I just want to give honor to Sister Tamika's mother coming all the way from Ohio. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Mothers, mothers, thank God for your mothers. 
because you might not always have them. Amen. Cherish them. Amen. Love Amen. them. Yes, Don't wait till Mother's Day to honor them. And as they get older, it might not be so easy. They might get grumpy. And they might not be so easy to love on, but you don't know the sacrifices that they made for you, even from a child. Right. So love them. All right, love them. Cherish them. Amen. Cherish your Amen. mother. Amen. Cherish them. Look at my baby. Yeah. I have to share with First Lady because she loves her just as much as I do. <sighs> That's her baby. Amen. Bishop. Amen. Let's stand for the benediction. What a wonderful day. Amen. Amen. Yes. What a wonderful Amen. day. What a wonderful conference. Thank you, Mother B, for your for your talents, your gifts, your, yes. your love that you yes. come over to California to help make us better. We don't know where we would be. Amen. I would tell you to hold somebody's hand with imaginary. And hold somebody's hand. All hearts and minds are clean. God, we certainly thank you, for, thank you for the speaker, her family. Thank you for using her to pour into our lives something unique and different. Thank you for our honesty and our transparency. Thank you for the support of her husband. Bless them. New York is not around the corner. It's a little ways from here, so give them traveling mercy back. May we be remembered of them in our prayer. And as we leave this place, but never your presence, we're always mindful that you're God. And besides you, there's no other. Now unto him who is able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present all of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you of the word that we heard today. God is in the business of making you new and improved. Go and let that word be your, be your testimony. We love you and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Before you leave, give somebody a, a bump. God bless you. I mean, we want to greet somebody, but we thank God for you. We love you all.